it's time to unbox this laptop and today we're just gonna see how good budget laptops nowadays especially with the newest Ryzen chips let's check it out Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here. And what a big box we have right here. My table is too small for this thing, so I need to get a new table if I'm gonna unbox more laptops in the future. But anyway, let's open this right now. And a little bit of background. This is actually not my computer. I actually bought myself a 16-inch MacBook Pro because I use Final Cut to edit videos. But I always like to see these kind of laptops that, you know, priced at the very good price point. I bought this for 9 million rupiah. I'll put the equivalent in USD right here. And it's just got so many good specs inside. This is Asus VivoBook M. 413i free Asus bag, which is really nice. Let's unbox this actually first. Very minimalist branding right there, so you can use this for whatever that you want to do. All right, and wow, cool. So once you open the box, like you see that this pops out, and uh, yeah, this is a small 14 inch laptop that wow, it looks good. Comes with Windows 10. This is the silver color. They've got some other colors as well. And the Intel counterparts are more expensive by like one to two million rupiah, which I'm gonna put the equivalent right here. So you can see there, the Ryzen counterparts is definitely much, much cheaper and it makes it a very appealing choice. So yes, this got the latest AMD 4500U. Very curious to see how good the integrated graphics are. And especially the Intel 10th generation are also seeing huge boosts in their uh, iGPU, right? So yeah, let's see what else do we have inside the box here. Warranty card, how to use whatever. Oh, and this is the stickers to put in your keyboard. What? <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, but I'm not gonna pimp my laptop like that. And moving on, this is actually not my laptop. It's Francisca's aunt. So I figured why not unbox it for you guys because I chose this by myself. See if you have a better recommendation than me, but I think this is a very nice package for the price. All right, so let's finish the box here. We have a very small 45 watts of power brick not much bigger than my palm and don't forget to open the plastic the next one is no nah, nothing <laughs> let's investigate what do we have here very nice screen to body ratio the bezels are quite thin actually as thin as my macbook pro which is kind of crazy so let's see how much flex do we have there are some but that's to be expected you know this is plastic and also the keyboard here they have 1.4 millimeters of travel but they don't feel like tactile Finally, this is the glass trackpad. Or is it plastic? I think it's plastic. We have a fingerprint sensor as well, which is very nice to quickly log in. Moving on to the side here, we can see two LED indicators, micro SD reader, no full size SD card, and also two type A USB 2 speed plugins. This is probably for your keyboard, for your mouse. Those are not fast ports which is pretty sad to see honestly but things get better on this size because you have headphone jack usb type c full size usb 3 gen 1 so all these ports are only 5 gigabit per second and also full size hdmi port and your power plug-in moving on to the bottom of the case we can see that there's a little bit of flex but that's nothing too extreme it feels solid and this is 1.4 kilos so it's very portable very light and also you can see the heat pipe there running fan right here two speakers there firing downwards which i will doubt that it will sound any good but anyway pretty good so far and let's just fire it up right now huh okay so can you open it with one finger let's see Oop, you cannot <laughs> unfortunately you have to hold the base of the laptop to open it all right so it's now on it was out of juice so i need to charge it it's got half a terabyte of nvme ssd which is going to be fast at startup and also backlit keyboard as you can see right there it's lighting up it may not be very good on the screen right here it's only full hd 60 hertz i mean 45 percent of ntse i'm cortana nope and I'm stop that help. No, 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 no. Sign in here. no, 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 no,
serious color work like color editing stuff like that you won't be doing it with this laptop anyway right this is the fingerprint let's just try and set it up right now and we're gonna see how fast it is so touch the sensor again touch the sensor so finally we are done with the window setup wow that took quite a while these days all right so now we are on a desktop you can see the anti glare there yeah and right now we're just gonna see and benchmark a little bit about the cpu gpu with unigen heaven and cinebench and also we're gonna monitor the temperatures while doing that and also one thing that i realized is windows trackpad has gone a long way because nowadays they have gestures like three finger up three finger left and right four finger left and right they are all very responsive responsive and very intuitive here and my favorite gesture of all time is being able to tap with the other finger while the one finger is you know browsing around so I can do this and tap on that very very handy and it's very nice to see that it is present here all right so now let's do the Cinebench run zero percent utilization now 50 degrees let's see okay now it's running currently at a hundred percent utilization on all six cores and we are using 25 watts of cpu power just to the cpu and remember this laptop is running on a 45 watt power brick so 25 watt just for the cpu that's quite the power that you have right there and right now you're gonna see 83 degree celsius okay quite good let's see if that will ramp up to 100 degrees because if that's the case then that's quite hot and right now the fans are not at full ramp but we can see on the cinebench test here Yep, they are working real hard. Actually, the NVMe SSD is from Samsung, so that's really nice to see. Radeon Graphics is idling around at 200 millihertz. Millihertz. And right now, still at 25, fans are kicking up, and still 85 degrees, very good temps right there. We're almost finished at the Cinebench run. Okay, so the scores are in. That is insane. You can see right here, it's almost as good as a 4 core 8 threads Core i7 7700K desktop CPU. The temps, the highest was 85 degrees. Very, very nice. 30 watts of total power package, but I think that's just like the boost clock there. So it's not staying at that full 30 watts the whole time. It's more stable at 25 watts. All right, cutting the video off a little bit. Right now, you're looking at the Asus VivoBook built-in webcam and I just can't comment much. This is a webcam in the very literal sense of the world, of the world, of the word. My goodness, the colors, the white balance. This is grainy as I can't say anything anymore. There are tons of lights shooting at me right now. I don't think you will use this for anything other than quick voice or video calls and also the microphone what you're hearing right now is the quality of it and in a bit i'm going to show you the sound quality of the speaker tuned by harman Kardon, as they say right here but we're gonna see Alright, so now we know that it is a very strong performer on the CPU side and it's not that noisy either, not that hot. Now I am testing the graphics side with Unigen Heaven. It is running on benchmark mode right now and we can see that it is drawing 20 watts of power. I've been putting this running for a while there until everything kicks in and you know stabilize. When you're gaming for like one, two, three hours, this is the kind of performance that you will get. We can see 100% GPU utilization there 1500 megahertz on the graphics itself and about 10 to 20 percent of cpu utilization so on a total power that's like 20 watts there okay so the results are in 19.7 fps with a score of 496 not too shabby for an integrated graphics really and right now let's just hit it even harder and let's fire up cine bench and we're gonna see just 
how capable this laptop is. Yep, Cinebench are running, Unigen Heaven are running and benchmarking, and we are still actually lower at 14 watts. What is happening now? Oh wow. Okay, so when you are hitting the, both the CPU and GPU hard, Actually, you can see there 100% GPU utilization, 100% processor utilization. Most of the power are gonna go to the CPU because power consumed now is only 15 watts. That's not much compared to when you're just hitting the CPU only or the GPU only and the graphics are running at half the frequency. It used to run at 1500, but now it's only 700 megahertz, so okay. That is the thermal constraint that we are working at on this laptop and we're gonna see just how hot it is on the bottom it gets pretty hot on this top part here at the bottom not so much uh, because you know that's just the battery okay so now the results are in and let's check out the fps here on the graphic side 15 fps s opposed to what was it 19 17 i think it was 19 almost 20 fps right and right now the score took a hundred hit and on the cpu side now we have almost half the points 1372 so when you're hitting both cpu and gpu hard yes this laptop is not made for it i think if you're gonna be using this laptop for gaming video editing stuff like that you are very unlikely to get this kind of dip in real world usage because normally people just don't max out 100% of their CPU and GPU. All right, so to wrap things up, what are the takeaways that I've learned from this laptop here? First, budget laptops are getting really good these days. If you're not really doing any serious editing, you probably will be fine with a laptop like this. Secondly, Ryzen chips are really, really good, especially the 4000 series one. So if you're looking at a laptop manufacturer asus hp dell if you can find the ryzen counterpart strongly consider that because it will be cheaper and it will still perform really really good and the third one this is more like a tip from me to you is don't you dare touch the hard drive option if you see one always opt for ssd if you can nvme ssd that will give you the most benefit when you're doing day-to-day -day tasks you know opening apps transferring files things like that that will be a huge boost in the performance just stay away from hard drive unless you're dealing with external hard drives okay so that's pretty much it for the video thank you so much for tuning in it's been really nice recording this It'll be a lot for me to edit this because I've made so much mistake. This is like almost one hour recording already, but I'm really glad to have you tagging along watching this video. If you're interested, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, or if you find this video helpful, or if you want to see more of this face talking, whatever that comes out of his mind. I'm Kenneth, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> this looks so weird! <laughs>